Hello everybody and hello Brian, Brian Tulsa. You may know Brian Tulsa from taking on people like Mystical Forest and Concordance and Thunderfoot. There is a likelihood that you don't know who he is though and that is a damn shame because he is one of the best people on this website in our little area of YouTube. And unfortunately, uh, well for us, um, not so much for him, he is taking a break from YouTube at the moment uh, or very soon because he's going to law school. Thanks, Brian, thinking of us. I see. But anyway, he does plan to come back, and so I still highly encourage you to subscribe to Brian Tulsa because, like I said, he is absolutely fantastic, and his latest video was no exception. His latest video, like all good videos, makes you think, because it was on the subject of circumcision. And he was basically saying that, um, I hope I'm not misquoting him here, but it seems to me like he was saying that he pretty much completely agrees with the anti-circumcision campaigners on the actual arguments and issues surrounding circumcision. But he really, really does not agree with a lot of the tactics that anti-circumcision campaigners employ. That's just a quick overview of the video, and I'm going to go into some depth as to why I'm responding to this later on, but I have to stop you just a second here. If you are someone who is watching this video who has, this is the first time they've come across this debate about whether circumcision in general, not just on, on girls, is bad, I suggest you stop watching this video right now and go and actually research the issue at hand here. The issue is all circumcision done on infants without any medical necessity is wrong. If you're a person who has never really come across this debate and you're instantly thinking, wait a second, male circumcision is completely different to female circumcision, stop watching this video right now and go and do some research into this debate. Because I've already had this debate with people and I really, really don't want to be making the same arguments again. I will not respond to anyone saying things like, oh, well, I didn't remember being circumcised, so that makes it okay. Or circumcised penises are cleaner and uncircumcised ones are really difficult to clean. Or worst of all, circumcision is justified because an uncircumcised penis is kind of icky and gross and uh, circumcised penises look a lot better, so that justifies doing it. Seriously, I'm not kidding. If you haven't encountered this debate before, go and do some research because I'm not going to respond to you if you keep employing arguments like that. I suggest you go and watch some of Freedom O Speech's videos on this because he is absolutely fantastic. He does probably the best videos I've ever seen on this debate. He also does videos on other things, but on this debate specifically, he is probably the best person I've seen do videos on it. I'll link some of his best videos in the description if you want to go and have a look at those. Um, I wish he'd upload uh, some of his older videos from his Suspended Freedom of Speech channel um, because some of those were absolutely just astoundingly good. Um, but yeah, there's still some really fantastic videos on his on his newer channel um, at the moment. Seriously, I'm not kidding. Go and watch some of these videos because you may be in a position right now where you don't think that your mind can be changed at all. But I have literally had PMs from people when I've done circumcision videos in the past wherein they would send me a PM and say, look, I think you're really wrong about this and it's kind of offensive what you're saying. I'm circumcised or, you know, I, I had my child circumcised or whatever. I'm just in, in support of circumcision. Uh, you're completely wrong about this. Basically, I really disagree with you on this. And I'll say, okay, well, first of all, have you seen this video? And they'll say, no, I haven't. I'll say, okay, go and watch this video by Freedom of Speech. It is fantastic. It will, you know, start you out with a good foundation on the, on the debate and hopefully it will, you know, get you to understand where I'm coming from. Go and watch that video first, then come back to me and if you've still got some problems with it, then we can have a discussion. And they've gone away, watched the video and come back about half an hour later and said, wow, that was eye-opening. That has completely changed my perception of this issue and you are completely right. Well... Freedom of speech is completely right. I'm not making that up. That has literally happened to me. People have watched Freedom of Speech's videos and changed their mind instantly. Do you know how rare that is? You know how rare that is on YouTube? So seriously, go and watch some of Freedom of Speech's videos. So again, I just want to repeat this. I want to make this absolutely clear. If you are new to this debate and you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, go and do some research on the subject. Stop this video. Go do it now. Okay, rant over. Let's actually uh, respond to Brian. So basically, Brian was saying that Again, I hope I'm not misquoting him here, but it seems to me like he's saying that although he generally agrees with the anti-circumcision campaigners in terms of arguments and, and facts and discussion and things like that, um, he's not all that enamoured with the tactics that they are using. In other words, he doesn't think that going up to people who are proponents of uh, male circumcision 
and saying, oh, you're all terrible parents and you're abusing your child uh, is a good idea. I'm very ambivalent on this because although he is absolutely right, as always, in that you do catch more flies with honey, I have a very hard time keeping calm about this. What I mean is I have in the past on this particular issue been given over to let's say, impassioned speech. Take it away, embarrassing past Jacob. If you are a man who was circumcised as a child, you have been mutilated. Yeah. Thing is, I still agree with that in that it's right. The fact of the matter is, when you circumcise a child with no particular medical necessity, that is mutilation. That fits the definition of mutilation. Although that's true, I completely understand that me saying that probably pissed off quite a few people who could really have done with a more sensitive approach. And I, I guess I kind of regret doing that video. Not because it isn't true, I'm afraid it is, but because it was a pretty insensitive approach. It was kind of mean. And although I was angry, and you know, people get angry on this website and you know, when, just because we're all atheists and free thinkers doesn't mean we're all completely Spock-like rational people where we can't express emotion and we're all completely logical and shit. I was angry about this issue and you know, I have a right to get angry every once in a while. Again, I completely understand that that probably didn't help. But that's not exactly what Brian is saying we shouldn't do. He is saying we shouldn't do that, but he goes a little bit further. He's saying that not only should anti-circumcision campaigners not be like massively aggressive and angry, but they shouldn't really use words like mutilation. Again, this is if I'm understanding him correctly. I'm not exactly sure if he actually said those exact words. We shouldn't use the words mutilation, but the general feeling of his videos is that, you know, don't be aggressive, don't use inflammatory words. And I'm kind of ambivalent about that because Brian is ever the pragmatist. He's, you know, he's been involved in local government before. He he's always looking for how to get the job done uh, and how to, you know, carry out goals quickly and efficiently. Whereas, I suppose, like I said, I'm quite susceptible to getting angry on things. Even though that might get me some claps and some whoops and some hollers in one corner, it is probably going to alienate the people whose minds I'm trying to change. Having said that, I still have a massive problem with calling circumcision done on girls mutilation, but when it's done on boys and it's often a completely homologous procedure, these are the same flaps of skin, they are medically homologous, I have a big problem with calling female circumcision mutilation, but deliberately making a conscious choice not to call it mutilation in the case of circumcision being done on infant boys, even if ultimately it will probably help further the goals of the anti-circumcision movement. It just seems inherently offensive to me because you're doing the same thing to boys and girls and saying one is mutilation but the other is perfectly fine. It's, it's even a positive thing. That is offensive to me. That really does piss me off. But again, getting angry about it and calling it mutilation is probably doing more harm than good. And I don't really have a conclusion on this. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to think. I don't know whether I should stop myself from calling it mutilation in the case of male circumcision, even though it seems highly offensive to me and it really pisses me off that people do consider it okay to do pretty much an exact same procedure on boys, but it's completely horrific and disgusting and traumatizing and barbaric when it's done on girls. But again, Calling it mutilation and saying it's child abuse, even if it is, probably doesn't help the debate. So, I don't have a conclusion to the end of this video. I'm just saying, well, fuck, <laughs> you know? I don't know what to think. Do you?